five months. That is all that stands between you and your A-level exams. And here's the thing that most students don't realize. Five months is enough time to change everything if you do the right things. Whether if that is just you are aiming to get the A-level regardless of the grade, or if you're aiming for those top A's and A stars to get the university place that you are desperately wanting. Whatever your position is right now, you are capable of making huge progress if you follow what I'm about to go through in this video. I'm gonna go through in this video strategies for you to follow for the next five months that you could make at least two grades of progress if you do follow it. And that's exactly what students have told me time and time again on results day, how they followed the advice in my videos plus resources and they ended up improving by a huge amount. So make sure you're watching all the way through to the end because you need all of these tips to ensure you make that kind of level of progress. And before we get started, don't forget that on the 6th of January and the 8th of January, I'm running two A-level revision sessions. The 6th of January is exam technique, application and critical analysis, which combined will make up over half of your A-level mark. So that is such an important one to attend. And on the 8th of January, it is photosynthesis, a big topic that gets assessed every year or every other year. And it wasn't assessed much last year. So I think it's going to be coming up this year. So you don't want to miss that revision lesson. Both of those classes are less than a pound. They are 99p for one entire hour live, plus the recording, plus pre-questions to try, and the slides, and post questions to try. And you get a week within a private study community with me, so you can ask me any questions that you might be stuck on linked to the session. And if you want to improve your grade by coming along to these sessions, I'll link it in the description for you to sign up now. But for now, let's improve your grades. Starting with the first essential ingredient to this success, and that is your mindset. Because this is actually often where most students go wrong. Maybe your previous test results or your mock grade hasn't been what you wanted. Maybe you're already feeling like you're behind. Maybe the content feels endless and the thought of the exam questions are just so impossible, particularly with those pesky mark schemes. But here's what you need to remember. Progress isn't linear. Some weeks, some topics, everything just clicks and you do so well on a test. But then the next test comes along and you're having a bad week or you just haven't quite understood that topic yet or the skills and your grade drops. That doesn't mean you're failing. It's a completely normal part of learning. Everyone's results go up and down. Yes, some see bigger fluctuations than others, but everyone has ups and downs in their learning journey. So here's what you need to remember. Your current grade right now is not your final grade. It's basically your start point from today. And that means you have got five months to improve it. Consistency beats intensity. You don't need to have every single day is perfect for your revision. You will have good days and bad days. Don't beat yourself up about it. You're a human. That's what happens to everyone. But the essential thing is that you are putting in regular effort. And if you've had a few bad days, you don't just suddenly give up thinking, well, that's it. There's no point now because I didn't revise for the last week or the last couple of days. So it's game over. And lastly, and probably one of the most important beliefs really do matter. If you think you can't improve and you are internalizing that thought and telling yourself that, you're probably not going to improve. It will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whereas if you are telling yourself, I haven't done well on this test or I haven't done much revision so far, but I know I'm going to change that and I know I will improve, then you probably will improve. There is so much research into this, which is scientific. It's not just all about affirmations. It is this mindset that if you are telling yourself you can do something versus you can't, you are more likely to achieve if you say you can and you are more likely to not achieve if you say you can't. So start telling yourself you are going to get that grade that you are after. And from my experience of teaching since 2009, the students who make the most amount of progress aren't the ones that are naturally clever or deemed to be naturally clever. It's the ones who refuse to give up. Even when things aren't going well, they do not give up. They keep trying, they keep pushing and practicing, and they are the ones that make several grades of progress. Part two then, the next ingredient to this success is we need to think strategy and in particular, organization. 
This is going to be the backbone for your five month transformation. So step one is we need to come up with a goal and it needs to be specific. We can't just say, I want to get better at biology or I want to get a higher grade. You need to be saying, my goal is to move from a grade C to a grade A. And then we need to be thinking, how are you going to achieve that? So use your past tests, maybe a mock paper if you've got it already and the specification and actively go through highlighting what are you currently already pretty good at getting lots of marks on and in another color highlight what you're currently weaker at. And it's those ones that are your weak points that we need to be focusing more of the time on. So if you can improve on your weaker areas, that's how you're going to maximize your increase in marks. Step two in organization is having a topic and study tracker. To do well in your A-levels, it requires repetition. Now, there is actually research that shows from Ebenhaus's Forgetting Curve that you need to be revisiting five times. So every bit of theory needs to be revisited five times. Now, that does also include homework that you would have done as soon as you learned it, maybe an end of topic test as soon as you learned it, the mock exams plus ongoing revision. But if you do revisit five times, that should be enough to embed that theory into your long term memory. So here's an example of the sort of thing that you might be doing. Number one might be your piece of homework linked to it. Number two might be the first time you revise it for a test. Then number three might be you are doing active recall or exam questions linked to your mock exams or another load of tests. And then the fifth time is going to be the revisions around the actual exam. Now, if you are struggling to think, how would I plan this? I actually have a free space revision tracker on my website, which has all of the spec points so that you can tick off or write in what you've done those five times, just to make sure you aren't forgetting anything. And step three with your organization is make sure you are balancing learning the theory with other skills, whether that's exam technique like application, critical analysis, the essay if you do AQA, the comprehension if you do AQA, the multiple choice if you do OCR, or it could also be practical questions, maths questions. So some of your revision slots throughout the next five months need to be dedicated to skills, not just topics. And if you are struggling to know how you might revise one of those skills, I've got all of them explained on my YouTube channel. So you just need to search my name, the skill, watch the video, which is probably 15 to 20 minutes. And then I've got free bundles of exam questions linked to every skill, including practicals and maths. And that then be the second part of that revision slot. Now, the third ingredient is how you actually structure your revision. And if you did watch my video just before the Christmas holidays, I about a revision timetable, then you should know this well. And that is how you actually split your time when you're revising. One big thing that I often hear from students is I revised so hard and for hours and I still didn't improve. And sometimes the reason for that is you weren't doing the right kinds of thing with your time. Sometimes people spend too long just passively watching videos or passively reading the textbook thinking, right, I've done two hours of revision. That's great. But really only 20% of your time should be watching videos or reading the textbook. The next 40% needs to be actively recalling that information to help you remember it. So 40% is remembering, doing things like flashcards, blurting, my active recall workbook. And then the other 40% of the time should be based on exam questions, whether that is free ones I've got on my website arranged by topic or doing actual past papers from the exam boards. And as you get closer to the exams, this proportion will need to shift because you should already have ticked off the 20% understanding. And that would then mean that maybe you can spend 40% of your time doing the remembering, 60% of your time doing exam questions. And if you do still struggle with exam technique, then don't forget that I do have the biology study club, which lots of students join at this time of year to get that final boost before their exams. Because in the biology study club, yes, you get my flashcards included. You get study trackers included. You get access to three teachers and who are all examiners as well. And you also get live lessons every single week. You get a live one hour AQA and OCR lesson and you get a 30 minute AQA and OCR exam question session where we really fine tune your exam technique and I help you to fully understand the demands of the mark scheme. So if you do want to join that biology study club where so many students have improved their grade, then I'll link that in the description below. And the final ingredient is a few quick pointers to remember. So let's take a look. Try using the Pomodoro technique where you have 25 minutes of focus 
us five minutes break. And by the way, I actually have two Pomodoro style videos where you can revise with me. So if you want to have me as your virtual study buddy, then check those two out. Number two, track your wins. Every bit of tiny progress counts and should be celebrated. Don't wait to feel motivated. Action creates motivation. So start doing these tasks as I've said, and you will start to feel positive and motivated because you are ticking off things and getting it done. And start harder topics earlier in the year. So May isn't so overwhelming and you're tackling your weaknesses as soon as possible. And remember, your goal isn't perfection. It is consistent effort. That is the key thing to improve. So there we have it. That is my five month roadmap to success that if you can follow all of those ideas, you should see improvement as much as two grades improvement I've seen in the past and more from students who followed this advice. But that is it for today's episode. Hopefully I'll see you at the two mock sessions coming up. Don't forget to sign up to those, but I will see you in a video very soon, everyone. 